Hey guys, Dustin Apple here. It's that time of year again. We're thinking about bow fishing. We're thinking about getting out there. <laughs> Actually, it's late. It's the first of April. We're supposed to be out there uh, doing what we do, right? But I got a lot of work to do in the boat before I ever get out and get to shoot my first fish of the year. Um, today I'm going to take a bunch of parts that I bought from eTrailer.com and we're going to turn this single axle boat trailer into a tandem. Now, this I kind of propped everything up here just to show you what it looked like to begin with. Um, as you can see, you have to do before laying here because I've already done taking everything apart. As you can see, here's where my springs were hanging before, and I don't have a fully flat frame. Okay, that's going to add some challenges to the build. Um, to top that off, my frame isn't flat across, it V's in the middle. So I took a little time and I've done, uh, figured out what I'm going to do. I took a 2x4 underneath there stretched it from one side to the other and I realized that this point right here and this point right here are flush with the bottom of the frame. So I took a 2 by 4 up here and, and uh, drew a line across these two tabs. That way I know I can cut these all flush and that's going to be where the bottom of the frame is. So I have, uh, I have quite a few parts here. I'll go ahead and show you those now. Okay guys, I was going to show you some of the parts that we're going to use today. Um, like I said, everything I got, we, uh, we bought from eTrailer.com. Um, for me, it was the easiest side I could find that uh, um, I liked the way it was laid out. You could go in there and you could pick parts. You could see parts that uh, coincide with other parts. And for me, it seemed fairly easy to go in there and just uh, buy what a guy needed to buy to get the job done. Now. Over in the corner, I'll show you here in just a second, we got uh, two brand new 3,500 pound Dexter axles that are easy lubes. They've got the uh, uh, grease fitting on the end of it that'll shoot the grease down inside the axle and up to that inner bearing, which if you own a boat trailer, that's the most important bearing, right guys? <sighs> so what we're gonna do, I know for a fact that this boat by itself weighs 2,200 pounds, okay? Um, the trailer has a single axle weighed 950. So let's just say that the boat and trailer frame by itself, let's just go ahead and say that that weighs 3,000 pounds. Okay, we're gonna put two new axles underneath it. So I'm gonna shoot for 5,000 pounds on my tandem axle trailer. These are, if you're shopping at eTrailer.com, PR722 1,250-pound axles or springs, sorry. And to hang it all together, this hanger kit comes with the equalizers, all the hardware, shackles, everything you need. The hardware kit on this is an AP233-H248. Now for me, if you guys are shopping here real soon, I bought that whole kit for like 40 bucks, okay? Now, that, that's their sale price. It's normally like $130, but if you guys are thinking about doing this, I'd get on it now. But uh, as you can see, um, got everything we need. Here's the main part, the heart and soul, everything that makes it all marry together and work um, nice and smooth. Make sure each axle has the right amount of weight on it, no matter the height of your tongue on your trailer. All right, let's show you those axles. <laughs> okay, guys, there I got. I got one of them out of the package for you so you can see you got the nice grease fitting right there on the end. Uh, everything comes pre-lubed for packaging that way it doesn't rust. Um, already has the spring hangers mounted on the axle. Um, what you probably can't see from where you're at is there's a slight bow to these axles. Okay, That's typical. It's, it's more or less a spring rate that's built into the axle if you will. Okay, so once the axle gets weight on it, it kind of flattens out a little bit. And this being a 3,500 pound axle, um, if I had the right springs, we could load these two axles upwards of 7,000 pounds. 
but we're not going to do near that. You can, when you, when you get ready to do a tandem, you want a heavier than normal axle and then use your spring rate to get the weight of the trailer that you're looking for, okay? Okay, we picked up four of these, uh, four of these five star hubs for our 15 inch wheels and they already have the inner and outer races put where they need to be. We've got the inner and outer bearings. Uh, and of course, it comes with a, a standard seal. And then there's two types of end caps, uh, a straight smoothie cap and then a, uh, a cap with the, the hole in the end of it that takes a, a little rubber grommet that you push in there to be able to utilize the Easy Lube hub. Now, <laughs> since this is going on a boat trailer, I went ahead and sprung for the double sealed uh, inner bearing seals that will uh, that will keep just a little bit more water out and it's a cheap investment you know these are only like three or four dollars a piece something like that I want to put this together and I want it to last the whole year until next spring when I come and uh, check check my grease make sure everything's good to go well guys that's our part that's our rundown we're gonna get around here and uh, start laying out our hangers, see where we're gonna be. <laughs> All right, guys, I kinda got this laid out already. Um, before I ever took my axle off, I'll put a mark right here. I knew that's, that way I knew where my axle was when it was a single axle. Now, since this is a double axle trailer, and at the time it had just a little bit of heavy tongue weight to it. Not enough to hurt the trailer or hurt the ride of the vehicle, but it was a bear to move. So we want to move this first axle forward just slightly. And then our second axle will be back here and that'll help even out the load, okay? With the, uh, with the spring hanger kits, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, lock these off I can I can move my spring hanger out here just the least little bit before I lose the taper of the trailer and still be fine. And for me, that's going to work out just perfect because that's going to move my my front axle from where the old axle used to be. It's going to move it forward about six inches, and I think that's going to be really good for my setup. And then my second axle will be right back here. Once you guys are on eTrailer.com and you scroll down, um, once you're looking at the parts list, um, I'm pretty sure it's on the springs. Once you look at uh, the springs PR722 or the Easy Hanger Kit AP233-H248, um, you can just search that at the top and it'll take you right to it. But as you scroll down, it'll tell you the parameters in which these setups hang. So I already know that my axles are going to be 34 inches apart on center. The top or the center of the axle to the bottom of the frame is only going to be four inches. And that's what we want. We want it to ride low because it's a boat trailer. That way we don't have to back halfway out in the water to get our boat off. And I also know that the eyes of my hangers, not my springs, my hangers, I know my hangers need to be 29 and a half inches apart. So from the front one all the way to the back one is going to be 59 inches. And 59 inches comes about 10 inches short in the back of my trailer. With a heavy four stroke motor and a fan, most of my weight is in the back of my trailer. So that's exactly what I'm going to need to do. It's about time we fire up some tools, start, to start making some dust fly. Guys, always wear hearing protection and eye protection. It's the only two sets of ears and eyes you got. Let's get busy.
Okay, guys, so we've got our center hanger hung. That's how I'm going to start doing it. Uh, you got to have a place to start on either side. I'm going to do it on the center hanger. So what we need to do to make sure that our trailer pulls straight down the road, we're going to have a buddy hold the front of the tape measure, and we're going to line our hole up. We got right at 207 inches. Let's see what the other side says. Yeah, Alright, we're on our other side. Hold this up here. And it looks like it's within a less of a sixteenth difference. So that's gonna work out pretty good. We've got our center our center hanger right exactly where we need to be it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, Weld it in nice and tight, and then we're going to go 29 and a half on either side to mount our other hangers, and we'll be ready for our springs. All right, guys. I don't know if you can see or not, but up front, the uh, trailer up there, there's square tubing and had plenty to weld to. I got my front hanger up there just spotted into place. But back here on the back of the trailer, it's a two and a half by two and a half angle. These are fabrications that I've done earlier. Well, I don't have a good spot to mount to. So what I'm going to do, I've got just a little bit smaller piece of angle right here. I think it's two and a half. And uh, we're going to weld this up into place right here like that. Have me a nice, flat, extra strong surface to mount our hanger to. Go ahead and uh, Measure off where it needs to be. And we'll go ahead and get started. Be extra careful when you guys are welding over your head. Slack goes everywhere. Notice I got long sleeves on. Got my beard tied up. You get underneath there and uh, Burn a little wire. Okay, so we got our piece of angle welded up in there. Got a good flat flush surface to weld to. Only thing left to do is to uh, spot our last hanger in place. Make sure that our measurement's fairly close. Straighter they can be, the better. 
And the best way to make sure it's all straight is to just tack it in place and then put our springs and shackles and everything the way it's gonna be. Bolt it together loosely. We're not gonna we're not gonna tighten anything down yet. Make sure everything's nice and straight, and then we can come back and run our our, our good beads instead of just spot level. Alright, let's get that done and see what it looks like. One thing I wanted to mention, it's really easy to tell which way your springs go. This end is shackled together. There's a band on it. Uh, that's always the back. Um, I don't know if it's a manufacturer thing or an e-trailer thing, but uh, all these got red paint on the back end. Red is rear. Yes. Well. We about got all our uh, all our welding done. Everything's burned in nice and tight. And uh, for another modification, it doesn't really look too bad. One thing I didn't like is, I mean, this piece here is, of course, very heavy and strong, quarter inch thick by three inch. It's carrying a lot of weight. But uh, I did want to take a little bit of stress off this joint since this is my main baby right here. So. <clears throat> I had a piece of quarter inch plate laying around. Um, we've already done the other side. You can see I've got it cleaned off here. Um, by scabbing this on the side, it'll join the joint together and uh, not put so much stress on these welds um, and pretty much tie the whole joint into the frame the way it should be. There's no need to do it on the outside, uh, or I mean on the inside of the trailer. This outside uh, will do good plus you know, it's, um, it'll look good too, because it's going to be right in between the, the trailer wheels and you will be able to see it. So uh, we're going to burn this in and uh, make her good and strong, last a lifetime. Guys, that's it. We're all wired up. Um, as you can see, I've already got one axle in there. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go get the other axle and we're going to put it there. protect the spindle so well that fell off if you can keep it on there that way when you slide the axle through you don't dang it on another piece of metal or the ground all right now one thing is what I want to tell you about I put the axle in backwards now how do I know that there's some wires on here now that's if you want to add trailer brakes later but they're on my side. Now, really don't matter a whole lot, but uh, I like to keep everything the way it's supposed to be. The wires for the trailer brakes are supposed to be on the back side of the axle. So let's give this a flip. Now these, uh, these saddles right here, those are where your, your springs will sit. For the life of me, I can't remember the proper terminology for them. But uh, on the bottom there's a little hole right here and that's, 
that's where it's gonna it's gonna ride right on that little nub, that bolt that holds the springs together. So now, we're going to bolt them down. Now, these are your U-bolts, and this is, a, this is a flange that's going to go on the bottom of the springs. Uh, your U-bolts won't go in their own way. They have to go in this way. So, this will just mount with the, uh, the vent part. should be down. Slide that right over top of the bolt that's on the bottom of the spring. And your U-bolts right over top of the axle. And we need some nuts. Now, now these are self-locking nuts. So uh, once you tighten them down, they'll lock themselves. There's no need for for lock washers on here. Okay. Well, you all need to see the rest of that. I'm going to turn the air compressor on here and uh, put some air tools on that, bring it up nice and tight. And then I'm going to come and tighten up all my bolts on my suspension. Now, you don't want these so tight that they're not going to be able to move. And once you get done, your shackles will be over top of your equalizer. Okay? And you'll tighten these down to where they'll just barely be able to move on their own. You don't want to tighten them to the point to where they, they won't move at all. That kind of locks up the full suspension. But uh, and the bushings will wear out faster. So, like I said, we're going to turn our compressor on, get some air tools out, and uh, tighten everything down here, and we'll see you in a bit. Well, guys, there you have it. I'm going to stop for today. Um, I went through with the with the impact and and uh, tightened everything down. Um, these bolts are grooved there, um, so you want to just hold the bolt still, put the air on the other side to it, and watch that bolt pull all the way up to, to the hanger. And as soon as it gets to the hanger, stop. You can't even stop just a little bit before then. But you want this to move. Uh, it's a little stiff right now, you know, but uh, once it gets weight on there and gets moving down the road, it'll free up quite a bit. Um, I didn't. I didn't come out to the shop today until probably at nine o'clock this morning. It's about four thirty now. Um, so one guy doing this in the afternoon. Pretty good little project. Um, I'll uh, I'll get the hubs on there. I gotta go buy a couple tires. I've got four new wheels sitting over there, and uh, then we can think about putting some fancy fenders on here and uh, lighten her up. So, thanks for joining me, guys. We'll uh, catch you next time.